What's up, beautiful people? And welcome back to another comic book related video where I say words about things that I like <laughs> and you, the magically delicious, listen. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gundor, your genius, billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you guys be ever so kindly as to smash that like and subscribe button? because every little bit helps in this crazy, uncanny YouTube world. And today guys, I have uploaded both the Future State Aquaman videos into one full story video. So uh, yeah, hopefully for anyone who has yet to see those videos, <laughs> then I hope you enjoy these next nine to 10 minutes. Thus, without further ado, I give you Future State Aquaman. Enter the confluence. Dun, dun, dun. Enjoy, and away we go, under the sea. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't begin singing the Little Mermaid song, even though I really, really want to. <laughs> Anyways, our story begins in the future, where we see Jackson Hyde escaping Neptune once more, fighting off the guards and their shark cavalry along the way. And as he races towards the surface, Jackson is seemingly about to make it until a bright light shines down upon him, which then causes Jackson to smile as he begins to laugh hysterically, where he is then taken back down by the Neptunian guardsmen. Afterwards, Jackson is taken out from his cell to meet with the Warden of Neptune, who sort of berates our hero, recalling that Jackson whilst also informing us, the audience, that he's attempted to escape Neptune 300 times. Yet something is funny, referring to Mr. Hyde by his prisoner number. And here we see Jackson reveal his true name to the Warden. The Warden is thereby shocked with this information, because apparently, ever since Jackson has been in prison for whatever reason, he has yet to reveal his name and so on. Until today! The Warden is therefore intrigued and wishes for Jackson to elaborate. And here Jackson tells him that he thought he should know before it happens. Because she's out there, and that she's coming. And as both we the readers and this fish-talking Warden are puzzled by Hyde's response, we turn back the clocks, six years into the past, where we check in with both Jackson Hyde and Andy Curry aka Aqualass, the daughter of Arthur Curry Aquaman and Mira. And here we pick up following a battle against Aquaman's arch nemesis and Jackson Hyde's father, Black Manta, who's just escaped custody, leaving behind our wounded heroes. Once Jackson calls out for Aqualass, the two basically begin to bicker back and forth, displaying that this duo argues quite regularly, and it's clear that these two heroes don't get along at all. And on top of that, Jackson has adopted the title of Aquaman, along with taking on the responsibility of having to train Andy, now, while this argument gets heated by each passing second, Aqualass begins controlling the nearby marine life. As we are then shown a pack of sharks circling around Andy, Andy begins to freak out because she doesn't like it when she activates his power. Now, in case anyone do here doesn't know, check it, because Arthur Curry can communicate with sea life, the whole he talks to fish thing, and Mira can control water. So if Andy being their daughter, her powers get mixed because genetics. Therefore, as a result, Andy can control sea life, which she views as an immoral power. And, and so, because she's feeling guilty, Andy takes off. Jackson follows her, calling out to Andy, saying that whatever problem or problem she's having, she can talk to him about it, since that's the job Mira had entrusted him with. Suddenly, the water around them begins to change color, and eventually they realize that surrounding marine life is not Earth-based, almost as if these fish are alien of sort. And it's in this moment where the two realize that they must have accidentally slipped into the confluence, a vast interdimensional living ocean which connects all of time and space. So basically the two must have swim right through it and have now crossed over to an alien ocean, which is a dope concept by the way. So yeah, chicka chicka yeah. Anyways, back in the present, the Neptune Warden is like, hey, that's pretty dope on what you and your young apprentice discovered, the great ocean that connects all. The Warden then asks Jackson as to what the Confluence provided him, with Jackson answering the Warden that it provided him with clarity. And whilst Jackson is telling the Warden his experience traveling throughout the Confluence, we witness during another flashback where Andy and Jackson are both desperately swimming away from an island of sorts. Except this bad Larry is not an island, but rather a giant squid turtle. The two heroes are then captured by the monster's tentacles. Now while Jackson manages to break free from the monster's grip, Jackson is left dangling on Andy's leg, begging her to use her powers to control the beast. But instead, Andy formulates a water sword and cuts off her leg, resulting in Jackson falling back down into the water. And once Jackson is finished reliving the, this past traumatic moment from all those years ago, the warden suggests to Jackson that since the people of Neptune are an advanced society, they have ways in making those afflicted by deep pain or trauma forget their past events. You know, magic pills. 
However, though Jackson is grateful to the warden and wanting to quote unquote help him, Jackson admits that ever since Andy's death, he truly believed his, his mind was lost and that because of this deep trauma, he lost his strength. Suddenly, Jackson breaks free from his chains, like a beast, as he informs the warden that Aqualass, now Aquawoman, is alive and that she's here. Therefore, Aquaman, Jackson Hyde, can dish out some ass whooping. And away we go. As our story begins with a flashback, six years in the past, prior to where issue one last ended. And here we check in with Andy Curry, the daughter of Arthur Curry and Mira, whom last we saw got separated from Jackson Hyde due to a giant squid turtle attack, which resulted in Andy having to cut off her leg and Jackson getting imprisoned by the people of Neptune. Side note, I love saying squid turtle. I don't know why, I just thought I'd tell you guys because the more you know. Anyways, <laughs> and so we see Andy Curry washed up on a majestic looking beach and immediately Andy begins to freak out and it isn't just purely due to the loss of her leg, but she's also freaking out because Andy, for the first time in 14 years, is alone. And you know, she's scared because she's only a kid. She's missing a leg, bleeding out more or less. And on top of that, it's not like Andy's stranded in the Caribbean somewhere. She's all alone in the confluence. She's not even on Earth. <laughs> so her freaking out in my book is entirely justified. Now, while this is all happening, a school of glimmerfish show up to see who this person is. And if I'm going to be completely honest, these fish are really naive. They almost remind me of those green aliens from Toy Story. Like the aliens in Toy Story, they were never jerks or anything, but they would always point out the obvious. For example, when these fish pull up, they ask the question, hey, uh, poor girl, do you need this blood over here? They can't read the situation, nor can they read emotion. And in case you didn't know, Andy's pretty emotional right now. Yeah, so glimmer fish. Anyways, following this exchange, Andy, who has the ability to control marine life, is basically saying to herself, screw it, and forces one of the glimmer fish to get help. However, because Andy is not used to controlling this power she has, her powers instead take over one of the glimmer fish and have it formulate into a new water leg for Andy, essentially solving the whole bleeding out problem, which is quite dope. However, this immediately infuriates the school of glimmer fish as they demand that she release their brother and depart the island. Andy apologizes but explains in a very polite manner that she needs two legs in order to find Jackson, and that once this is all said and done, she'll give them back their brother. Now, here we're given a montage of Andy performing various survival skills that Jackson has taught her in order to survive. This includes hunting, starting a campfire, and the, and the ability to fight against intruders. And while this is happening, Glimmerfish are talking mad smack about Andy, telling her that she's going to fail, while at the same time telling her to, to give back their brother. So basically, they're just making her life absolutely miserable. But throughout, Andy endures, using Jackson's teachings to good use as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat against turtle raiders, along with knowing when to retreat, which Andy does so following the destruction of her shelter. Andy eventually swims far enough to the point where she's able to escape the annoying school of Glimmerfish. However, as Andy continues to swim, the days pass by constantly, to the point where she basically realizes that she's not making any progress. Then suddenly, one of the Glimmerfish that's basically her leg begins to talk, saying that she's not traveling the confluence the correct way. And it's here where both the Glimmerfish and Andy work together. And for the next six years, the Glimmerfish teaches Andy that the confluence is a living nexus of worlds, a being of water. And because of that, the confluence conducts Andy's journey in a manner in which best suits Andy. Now, eventually Andy, six years later, has found Jackson Hyde's location. And from here, she uses her ability to launch an underwater assault on the Neptune prison. And picking up where issue one immediately left off, we see Jackson taking on a, a platoon of guards only to be then joined by Andy, now Aqualand. And here, Andy releases all of her pent-up rage and anger against the guards, as she is clearly furious that Jackson has been locked up for six years. Not to mention that her getting to this point finally was more than likely a living hell. So we can totally sympathize the fact that she basically wants to murder all these guards times 3,000. However, just as Andy is about to crush the skull of one of the guards, Andy is calmed down by Jackson, as it reminds her of her final lesson, that being restraint. And from there, the two make their getaway, successfully escaping Neptune. Once our heroes reach the surface, Jackson manages to officially calm Andy down. And as a result, Andy frees her aquatic army. Andy then proceeds to cry, but Jackson immediately hugs her, providing comfort, as Jackson tells Andy that they're both safe and alive, and that together they will find their way back home added with the fact that they will never lose each other again. And as a way to end this story on a happy note, Jackson mentions to Andy that since she traveled across dimensions, got lost in time, ended up losing a leg, only to have it replaced with a glimmerfish, she can now finally join the Justice League. 